Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome. Uh, so today's announcements, um, we have uh, God's Garden Project, a uh, weekly family ministry program on Zoom. Uh, if you, your friends, your neighbors are interested in nurturing your family's faith, uh, please contact Reverend Dr. Shin to register today with no fee at ebenezeruc at gmail.com. Um, coldest night of the year, uh, join us after service to learn more. Uh, annual, annual reports, please send reports to Susan by February the 2nd. If you have any questions about what is required, please email her. Um, thank you for all your work in 2021. Ebenezer's Heritage Tower um, can stand strong again with your help. Please call Jim Ovens um, for details on two important projects, the uh, new church signage and the uh, Heritage Hall Tower. Uh, this week, office hours are from Tuesday to Friday uh, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Sunday, uh, Zoom service, third after Epiphany, uh, 10 a.m. with uh, Reverend Dr. Shin and worship leader, myself. Um, Tuesday, uh, stacking of chairs in the sanctuary, uh, 1 a.m. or it must be 1 p.m. this Tuesday. Uh, also, there's a board meeting at 7.30 p.m. via Zoom. Uh, Thursday, there's a, a Black History Month meeting at 8.30 p.m. via Zoom as well and Friday, uh, setting out chairs in the sanctuary at 12 p.m. Um, upcoming events, uh, January 30, Zoom service, uh, fourth after Epiphany at 10 a.m. Uh, January 31st, we have a book club meeting at 7.30 via Zoom. Uh, February 1st, uh, stacking of the chairs in the sanctuary, uh, 10 a.m. at Tuesday. Um, also on February 2nd, um, we have the uh, good food pickup from 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. Uh, February 4th, setting out chairs in the sanctuary, uh, 12 p.m. Uh, February 6th, uh, we have Black History Sunday service. Uh, February 8th, stacking of the chairs in sanctuary. Uh, same with uh, on February 11th. Uh, February 13th, we have the um, Ebenezer United Church uh, 170th uh, anniversary. And on February 16th, we have the good food pickup as well from 12.30 to 1.30. Thanks. Thank you, Ian. Let us open the service with a call to worship. Oh, come, let us worship and lift our hearts. Not because the world is good and last week was awesome, but because the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the God of the whole earth. Oh, come, let us worship and open our mind. Not because our lives are all sweetness and light, but because even those who walk in darkness can see a great light, a light that shines in the darkness. O oh, come, let us worship and share our faith. Not because God gives us what we want, but because God gives us what we need. The one called Jesus of Nazareth, crucified and risen. Amen. We light this candle as a symbol of our faith in Jesus Christ. We are not alone. His presence is with us, illuminating the way of life. Today's opening hymn is Voices United 364, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. Thank you. 
to pray for this service especially today we are going to do a prayer for unity together gracious god you have commissioned us to make our common home a place of justice for all in your generous love you send rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous and in jesus Teach us to love without discrimination. We confess that we have failed to follow this teaching by disrespecting our neighbors, spreading false hoodoos through the various social media, participating in the disruption of social harmony. Our conduct risks making the world a barren field that no longer bring forth your justice for all of creation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and lead us to eternal life. Amen. The next hymn we are going to sing, Voices United 315, Holy, Holy, Holy.
first scripture reading is from Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 to 21. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is, is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Our second scripture reading is from Corinthians chapter 5, verses 19, uh, verses 14 to 19. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died, and he died for all, so that those who live might live long might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. Thank you, Yen, again. Today, I want to talk about three sort of buckets of things we need to put behind us. And then talk about three ways we can begin to put those things behind us to be done with that. The first bucket is behaviors and attitudes. You can see Paul makes a list here. I mean, Galatians chapter five, it's a list of behavior. And some of them are things you do, like adultery, lacking morality, idolatry, sorcery. Some of them are attitudes that you would have where it talks about jealousy and strife. Some of them are individual. Some of them are corporate. I'm surprised at how many of them are about things like the quarrels and divisions, factions, that rise up between us, but they are behaviors that we all struggle with. If we are going to move forward and become more like Jesus, we have to put those things behind us. Now, Apostle Paul uses the word here, he called them works of the flesh. And I want to be clear about what that means. We think of the flesh, as the body, and that's not really what Apostle Paul is talking about. In fact, the New International Version and some other translations have it as the sinful nature, contrasting the spirit with the sinful nature. It is that part of us that is driven by the self, it is the part of us that uses the word flesh because it is about the self, who we are. The Greek word is sarux, and it means the selfish nature within us. The part that is always wanting to be about us, he contrasts that with life in the spirit. And out of this selfish nature grow all of these things, Drunkenness, 
carousing, fornication, quarrel, strife, envy. You know the least. I love the way he says, the works of the selfish nature are obvious. I suspect that you know in your own life what those are and how they need to be put behind us, how you need to be done with that. The second sort of bucket that seems to be if we are going to continue to press on and move forward to put behind us are events, usually sad events, traumas, hurt, and resentment, things that we just can't seem to shake that hold us captive. In fact, the passage Galatians 5 begins by saying, for freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to yoke of slavery. What are those resentment and pains that just hold you captive? captive? I watched the movie, News of the World, this week. As it starred a Tom Hanks, and it is a Western, and it's set in Texas in the time just after Civil War the time of reconstruction. Tom Hanks plays this good guy who was Confederate soldier. He had been a captain and he ends up connecting with a young girl who is just a child. Her parents were killed by Kiowa Indians when she was very small. Then those Kiowa were killed and um, she was taken to be sent to her aunt and uncle who lived in Kestroville, the German town. So the two of them are going together and they are both trying to deal with the issues of their past. Tom Hanks was trying to deal with the issues of what he had done as a Confederate soldier and she was trying to deal with the loss of her parents. There is one scene where they are riding along. She speak no English, and he is trying to communicate with her. He says, you can't look back. You can't keep looking back. You've got to go forward. It is a great image that we have to figure out how to let go of those things behind us. Breen Brown, a research, research professor at the University of Houston, has written so much about shame and how the events of our past and our shame about them was shame that wasn't even from an event, just driven by the way we feel like we are how these have such an impact on us and our will, unwillingness to be vulnerable with others and the masks that we wear, as well as the forecasted that we put up. All of us have been through some tough times, certainly, you and I, all of us, many more than others, I guess. But at some point, we have to look at those things and figure out how to say, I'm done with that. I'm over it. I'm going to let it go. So that's the second bucket. And third one is interesting. And it sounds contrary to intuition. But if you read Galatians chapter 5, you realize it and it's religiosity. It is the idea that somehow if we just work hard for church tradition or the glory of the past enough, we will be good enough. So that's what Apostle Paul is addressing in the whole chapter when he says, do not go back to circumcision. But by that, he means don't go back to those religious rituals then you think will make you okay. As you know, the gospel of Jesus Christ, not our religiosity, is a gift to us. 
I know we tend to have lots of conversations in the church business about how we measure our success. When I discovered is that we tend to measure our success on throughput, not on output. How successful is a church? Well, how many people are in worship? How many people are attending Bible study? How many people are in, in small groups? How many people are involved in mission and outreach works? And that's natural. I don't know if I can figure out any other way to really measure. But the truth is that you really measure it by looking at the kind of fruit we are producing. How do you measure love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control? How do you measure those things in people? So those three things are what we have to put behind us, our behaviors, attitudes, events, trauma, and our shame, and then finally our soul of self-righteous religiosity. Now, if it were only that easy, let's look back three ways that the scripture says about how we can put those behind us. Here is the first one. Do not gratify. Do not gratify. The desire of the sinful nature of the flesh. What we, what the Apostle Paul is saying is that we should not give fertilizer to it or encourage the growth of it. Simply to say, we should not feed it. There is an old story you've probably heard, and I've heard it in different ways. It's about the young native man who says to the chief or his mentor, there are two wolves fighting with me. One is evil, one is good. Which one will win? That was his question. And then the wise one says, which ever one you feed. You have to figure out how to not feed those things that are works of that sinful nature. I was in the Bible study at one point many years ago where we studied the lectionary together. Now the lectionary is something ministers can use as they preach their way through the year and each listing of scriptures. Many churches around the country use it, so you are often preaching on the same thing. So I was a part of the Bible study, and what I found was these pastors or ministers were discontented and disgruntled. There was a lot of grumbling and griping about what is going on in the conference, what is going on in their churches, and all sorts of things. What I found was that it fed this anger, this gruntedness in me. It was a really small group, but when I attended the group, I found myself drawn into that. We often feed those things that are works of the flesh. This world, as you know, we are living in now make, make us in even easier to do that. There is the internet and social media, Facebook, YouTube, that are available to us. And we find ourselves drawn into those things that feed the lower nature within us. If we look at the terrible things that have happened, the folks who were part of that had been involved in all sorts of conversations that just fed their anger, their pain. 
that lower nature we cannot feed. We have to serve it. And what we want to feed is our compassion, our love for one another, the fruit of the spirit. So the first thing is to do not gratify, do not feed them. Now the second thing is that we must deal with it. If there is a deeply distressing or disturbing experience behind us to say, don't gratify, but don't gratify does not mean we are to ignore it. It means to acknowledge and deal with it and then you can move on. We've got to choose to deal with, to face, to address those things that begin to pull us, pull us apart. When I was in seminary, we had to write what I think took the place of a master's thesis, And it is called the credo, that means what we believe. And each 20 to 30 page paper, it is supposed to be a comprehensive explanation of our own understanding of the major doctrines of Christian faith. And when you write it, you have to provide biblical support, but also compare them to the theologians who had been studying in the systematic theology course. In theory, you work on it for entire year. So as you study each of these doctrines, you begin to put all the notes together. You may have been in a study group and you begin to work on all these things. So that when you reach the end of the year and the deadline is there, you have it all put together. You've been doing the writing and working on it that's in theory. Well, to be honest with you, I didn't do any of it as, I, as it was going along. And as the deadline began to loom, I began to get more and more worried and more and more anxious, but I, I didn't do anything. I just worried and flatted and stood. It was paralyzing. And when I finally got myself to the place where I knew I had to sit down and write it or I would fail, I sat down and I was able to churn through it. Interestingly, I did pretty well and got a descent grade. But the main thing was that my life was so much better. I enjoyed going to school after that. Before that, I kept thinking about how I still had to do it. So I think that many of the things in our lives that continue to hold us back, that continue to hold us of us and just drag us back are just because we never turn out and brought them out into the light and dealt with them. Whether it is a trauma or shame or failure, just something we are afraid to talk about while we think they will go away if we just ignore it, if we just approach it and deal with it. The point was, we really want to say to people, friends, we we'll all have stuff that we need to face and deal with. So the first way, is we don't feed it. The second way is what? We address it and deal with it so we can move on. If there are those behaviors in your life that are holding you back, don't be afraid to address them and say the words out loud with somebody you trust. Here is the third thing. It is the most important thing, I believe. Embrace the love of God anew. What I want you to notice is that Paul doesn't just say, 
quit that. Stop that. No, he didn't say like that. Instead, Apostle Paul builds a contrast between the works of the flesh and the life in the spirit. The fruit that grows out of the spirit. What he is saying is that it is the love of God that can transform us, that can change us. If we would look up and keep our focus on living and walking in the spirit, then we can put those things behind. Are you with me? I found an article from New York Times about how runners in football are running and they usually to look behind them to see if there was a defender who was kept catching up with them. But now, because of the technology, they will look up at the jumbo throne. We call it sometimes jumbo vision, the big screen on the top to see the players behind them. I thought that was great image of looking up at the jumbo throne, jumbo vision, keeping your eyes up instead of keeping your eyes back. Every time we find ourselves looking back, it's there we can turn and look up. We look forward so that the spirit will fill us. Tattoos on the Heart by Father Gregory Boyle is a marvelous book. He tells the story in his book about Cesar who got, uh, got out of jail and came to see Father Boyle who helped him buy some clothes and other things. Then, that night at 3 a.m., Cesar called Father Boyle to say, you know, Father Boyle, I've always thought of you as a father to me. And Father Boyle said, yes, I understand. Then Cesar said, do you think of me as a son? And the father boy said, yes, I love you. I think of you as a son. Let me read how Boyle examined that conversation and think about that experience. This is what he says. In this early morning call, Cesar did not discover that he had a father. He discovered that he is a son worth having. The voice broke through the clouds of his terror and crippling mess of his own history, and he felt beloved. God wonderfully pleased in him is where God wanted Sajar to reside. The desire of God's heart is immeasurably larger than our imaginations can conjure. This longing of God is to give us peace and assurance and the sense of well-being only awaits our willingness to cooperate with God's limited list, magnanimity. Ebenezer brothers and sisters, God wants to embrace us and he won't let go. But God is reaching out to us to fill us with the spirit and take us forward. In the ancient, ancient baptism, baptism ritual, those who were being baptized would stand on one side of baptismal font and take off their clothes. They'd go into the font and when they came out, they would put on the robe of light. They remove the clothing of darkness and put on the robe of light. There are many people who state, I'm done with that. For instance, you could meet a guy who was just getting out of jail for stealing from, from cars and said, I'm done with that. I don't know about the man who poured out the whiskey 
for the woman who was angry with her ex-husband and wanted to say, now I'm done with that. But I didn't know this. And that's that God wants to set us free from the things that hold us back. And God can do that. I pray that is true in your life and in mine. Everyone says, Amen. Let's pray. O oh Lord God, we know that there are things we just need to be done with. Behaviors, works of flesh, works of that sinful nature within us, resentment, anger, and hurt, even our self-righteous religiosity that makes us believe that if we just do religious or church tradition enough, all will be well. Forgive us, God and show us we can just be done with all the works of the flesh by opening ourselves up to be filled with your loving spirit. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. We continue the service with a hymn, More Voices 45, You Are Holy. Chapter 40, verse 1 says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. This time, let us pray for several things in silence for a while. Let us pray for God's kingdom, glory, and righteousness. Let us pray for dedicating our beings with our offerings. Let us pray for new year, new blessings, and new journey. Please pray for our church. Ebenezer United Church and its families. If you have any personal needs and wishes, just ask, trust, and listen. He will respond to you lowly and gentle. Let's pray for a while in silence.
healer of our every ill, light of each tomorrow. Give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. We pray for all those in need, whether in body, mind, or spirit, that your healing light and presence will bring comfort and peace. We pray for Angie Fix, Michelle Gillette, Mavis Grange and her daughter, Dorothy Grant, Joan and Clyde's friends, David and Donna Lee Gullison, Phyllis Harvey, Monique's mother, Iris, Diane McLean, as she cares for her cousin, Tanya's friend, Carol, and her family, Marella's father, Jim and Joyce's friend, Becky Shields, Rick Saunders, Diane's friend, Tokiko, Joseph Salins, Joseph Stepaniak, Mary's brother, Basil, Connie's friend, Elaine Liba, and her daughter, Andrea, Linda Wilson's friend, Linda and her family, Susan's friends, Joy and Reg and their daughter, Erin, Heather and Will, and all those we name in silence. Please keep closing your eyes and let me pray for offering and people. God, when what we offer seems small, help us remember we are part of something larger. Help us remember we pray that every moment of kindness magnifies love's reach. We pray for children and young people who must think about the future in certain times, facing threats new to this generation, like the pandemic and climate change. Give them hope rooted in the knowledge that their lives matter to you. Show them how to make a difference in the world, whatever threats they face as they grow. We pray for people for whom age and experience, illness, or disabled. Create a barriers to full participate in your world. Surround each one in pain or despair with your comfort and renew in each one a sense of dignity and purpose. Show them how much they matter to you and to us. We also pray for all those facing grief and loss in these difficult days. 
when it is still so hard to gather for support. Stay with those who must rearrange their lives without their beloved. Give them strength and comfort through your promise of resurrection. We pray for communities challenged by forces beyond their control, natural disaster, political strife, and economic consequences of the pandemic. Give courage to those facing challenges and wisdom to those who lead, so that well-being may be restored soon and hope for the future prevail. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. We continue together Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Before we close the service, we are going to chant another hymn, More Voices 27, Creator God, You Gave Us Life. Christ walks a path to bring compassion and justice upon the earth. Ebenezer, brothers and sisters, let us go with Jesus. Let us be the path of spirit in the world. Let us be a light of new hope, new vision, new freedom. May the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit, who makes us forward, be with you and all things in you. Amen.
to 